double on the inside. And uh, I think KB Bullock figured it out. Here. And he drops Cody Crawford with a right kick. And a looping oh. left drops Cody again as Fillar oh, going wow. for the finish. And Andy Social steps That's in to Andy. stop the fight. Beautiful. KB how do you say your last name? Oh, dude, thank you for asking. Some guys just call me Bueller the whole time. <laughs> I want to but, fuck uh, up my last, first... my last name's pronounced uh, like Buller, like Fuller, but replace the F with a B. Buller. KB Buller. What's the KB stand for? Uh, bro, if I had a name tag, it would just it just wrap around my chest. <laughs> like I can't even remember it all. Some oh, fair, fair enough, fair enough. You're just cut. You're just coming back from Bali recently, right? I was, yeah, yeah, I was. Were, uh, my were... best, my one of my best buddies got married since my childhood friends. Would you, would you guys, so how long were you out there for? Uh, I was only in Bali for six days, and then I was in Singapore for um, for two weeks. You were in Singapore, uh, Evolve's out of there, right? Yeah, I was training over at Evolve for a bit, but um, all the guys there, man, they're really tiny. They're really, really small guys. Yeah, you're, so. you're a giant human. So for those who don't know, you're a middleweight. In the blue corner, K. You move, you move very. A lot of your highlights. I've seen your highlights so far, and I watched one full fight. It was in 2012. It was um, Hard Knocks. Hard Knocks 18, I think, or 17. Um, I think that was uh, 2012. That might have been AFC 17. Okay. Oh well, uh, it, it ju I just saw the date on the YouTube video. It's like 32,000 views. Yeah. Shouts, shouts out to YouTube. Oh, never mind. No, yeah, that's Hard Knocks. That's Hard Knocks. That's yeah. when I was. Uh, I was a kid. I was just a little kid. I was like 18. Yeah. Yeah, that's crazy as shit. So, so you were so I, I, one of the things. I guess I mean you've obviously you've you've changed over the years. Uh, that that was that was just one of the full fights I was able to watch outside of the highlights. But one of the things that I will note about you and even Nico, shouts out first round management uh, uh, out there, um, is you you move unreasonably fast for someone your size with your frame. Like you you were able to throw like these crazy like leaping knees. Like it was like it was you let off with this. He was standing still. So I guess you're like I'm gonna fire this knee off. You fired this, like, it was like this leaping knee from, like, I don't know, it, it seemed like eight feet? <laughs> it seemed like you had, like, a broad jump over there. It was crazy shit. You moved. I, well, I should have, I think, uh, I really liked basketball growing up, and then uh, basketball was, like, my go-to. Right. But uh, then in the eighth grade, uh, I scored on my own net, and uh, oh, that's kind of when I, that's kind of when I stopped playing basketball. Go to uh, I started getting, I started getting fucking bullied, and I had to, I had to start, you know, learning how to fight, because, you know. Can't be scoring on your own net in basketball. Yeah, hundred percent. I would, you know, bullying's not okay, but for scoring on your own net, you should know better. <laughs> <laughs> it was halftime. Yeah. Court switch. Yeah. And uh, man, I got this. I got this ball thrown into me. Yeah. Caught the ball. I started thinking that I had this open net, so I tried to do this cool, fancy like oh. finger roll layup. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, I got it in. And then I looked <laughs> at the bench, and my coach was just like. <laughs> And then I realized, and I scored on my own net. And At that moment, he knew he fucked up. <laughs> retired my jersey that day. That day, oh shit! So, so I guess you're not getting a, a Toronto Raptors uh, invitation anytime soon. Nope. 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 How, no. Did you? Are you? So okay. So your basketball, you said, is your first love. So you, were, were you following? I'm assuming you followed that series. It's a big deal for Canada for Toronto to, to bring home the NBA Finals. You know what, Trey? Um, it's sad oh, because no. I I didn't follow it at all. Oh, uh, me neither. I didn't I follow it at all. Sport. I haven't followed any any sports other than fighting probably since since that fateful day in grade eight. <laughs> I'm telling Drake I, I, right I'm, now. I'm like I I don't really care about anything else other than fighting. I don't yeah. really watch uh, anything else, but I'm. I watch everything in combat sports. I, I mean, like I, I mean, oh, uh, I mean, like I understand. Like you got to have that laser focus, and then also you're you're competing at a high level. Unified MMA is like is a really really good. Uh, produ I don't know if that's what, where you're still fighting now, but the last three or four fights that I saw on your on your uh, your rap sheet, I guess I don't know what else to call it uh, <laughs> on your on your uh, on what you have has has been unified MMA, and I, I hadn't heard about them until I interviewed uh, Pat Pitlick. Um, over over there. Yeah. Um, he's he's phenomenal. Uh, phenomenal Muay Thai. And then he's also, amazing. Yeah, yeah. Also, 
fucking hilarious, like funny, like really funny, like crazy funny. Um, I saw I saw something he posted about you on his page. That that's how I heard about you. I heard about you through his page, and I heard about you through uh, through Nico, your, your manager. And um, and uh, you know they they're, they're they're giving you high praises, and and you know just from looking at the tape alone, like I I understand, I understand. So so what's so what's your martial arts background? You said you started off doing basketball. When did you start doing martial arts? Uh, I started doing like a little bit of judo when I was a kid, okay. like uh, eight or nine. Um, my mom was a black belt in judo, so she kind of put me in judo when I was a little kid. Okay, but I hated it. Um, <laughs> and then it started getting like real serious. Like I started taking my training real serious probably at fourteen. Like I started with taekwondo. Okay, and then um, and then just kind of went full tilt into like a generalistic approach of MMA. Like started doing like general MMA. I don't know, 15. Right. And then started taking, like, probably my first real, like, actual black belt jiu-jitsu coach, Rodrigo Resende, when I was 17. So, so you've been pretty involved in, in most, um, I would say, a lot of the traditional martial arts first, like judo, uh, uh, um, you said taekwondo, and then eventually you moved on to MMA. So, like, you've been, it seems like you've been competing or at least involved in some sort of sport at a very young age, which is, like, it's showing, right? Like, you seem very comfortable out there. That's the other thing I noticed about you, where you have that, that ability to, to, to close that distance real fast with these, like, very explosive movements. You're very calm. You're, um, you're not, you're not, over, you're not overshooting. You're, you're, you're not getting overzealous when you're, when you're, when you're hurting people. It's, it's interesting to watch. Oh, thank you, man. Thank you very much. No problem, no problem. So seven and zero. Um, unif- How did you come across Unified MMA? There was a there was a couple under uh, other promotions under the Unified before you reached there. How did you reach Unified? Uh, so the funny thing with Unified, I, Sunny, who's the owner of Unified, asked me to fight for him initially when uh, when I began my my fight career. Right. But at the time, like Unified was. <coughs> It's very different than the way it is now. Like it was like oh, basically a hall party. Okay, what does with, that mean? Like fights going on in the background. Oh shit! <laughs> and the, like the caliber of fighters, like were nowhere near where they are today. Right. And then there's two big players at the time, in I would say the the Western Canadian Canadian MMA scene. There's right. the MFC and the AFC, and I was fighting for AFC. Um. The two promotions, once they, 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 they I, don't, I don't know what happened to them, but they're, they're no longer operating. Mm-hmm. And uh, once they halted their operations, Unified kind of had this, Unified was the only player in town. So, um, you know, Edmonton being the big fight city that it is, it Unified got to take all of all that talent and put on the only MMA shows in town. So they became like, the the big player I would say in, in in the Canadian Western Canadian scene. Like you look at the cards now and they're they're just stacked top to bottom in terms of I think Canadian talent that's outside the UFC. So Yeah. Yeah it's, I mean it's, now it's it's so much bigger than what it was. That's I mean that's basically what I'm gathering. Like obviously I'm not from Canada, so I'm not I'm not getting like word of mouth from other people who watch MMA. Like the things that I that the the things that I because I'm in New Jersey. So the things that I yeah. typically come across are uh, the CFFC locally here. The CFFC is over here, and they, they do things in Pennsylvania, and they do things in Atlantic City here. Um, another there's another one, uh, the WXC, that's on the on the Fight Pass, and I think even Unified is is, is streamed on to um, I think Fight TV. Mm-hmm. They do a very they do a very good job at not only you know making a very good product as far as like getting athletes like yourself in there, but they do a very good job promoting you guys. Uh, uh, there's like a lot of, they cut a lot of good promos out there. So unified is one of those ones on my radar. Now it's like, what, every time I, I talk to somebody about it, who knows about it, it's, it's hailed as like the, one of the best promotions outside of like at, when the UFC is not in town <laughs> as, um, as the, one of the best like local p- promotions for Canada. Absolutely, man. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I think, I think it definitely is. So I mean, obviously, like you know, you you're seven and zero. How many, did you have? Did you have an amateur career going going into the professional fighting, or you just you just start kick it off hot? I had a, I had one amateur fight, and I and I wanted to do more. Yeah. But um, my coaches at the time just said just go pro, so I took their advice and did it. I kind of wish <laughs> I did do more though, because uh, once you once you have amateur MMA fights, you can have amateur kickboxing fights, amateur boxing fights, and. Once you go pro, you can't do that. Anymore, so that would have been nice. 
So you're so you're but interested hey, in, I mean, in competing in those other in those other field. I mean, like you can still kind of do that. They have, um, I mean, not, uh, not I, I don't think you have any interest in doing fucking bare knuckle boxing. It doesn't seem like a lot of people want to do that shit. But um, the uh, karate combat seems to be like a pretty good one. Um, that's that's up there as far as like just straight one on one. Does does anything else like would you would you be interested in, in bridging that gap? It seems to be that seems to be the big thing with like I'd, with a lot of athletes now. I'd love to one day. Um you know, perhaps have some professional boxing fights. I think that'd be really cool. Uh, Pat, Pat Pitt, like who you interviewed, yeah. is, uh, you know, he's, he's fought in professional kickboxing. He's going to be making his pro boxing debut. And then he's also, you know, uh, one of the best welterweights in MMA in the country. So yeah, it, I, it'd be cool. It'd be cool to do that as well. Yeah. But I think that if I look at myself objectively, I, my style is, is a lot more catered towards, uh, mixed martial arts. I so- think that there's just a, different type of timing for your right. strikes in mixed martial arts. I was going to, so that's going to be my next question, right? So like, what's your style knowing that no, now that I know that you have that judo background, you have that Taekwondo background, and then eventually you sort of transitioning into jujitsu and, and more MMA, general MMA type things. What would you describe your style as? That's a good question. Um, my style is like, if, my style is like would be like if if like Luke Rockhold and Adasanya made like a baby. <laughs> it's not how biology works. I'd be, like, slide. <laughs> I'd be like I'd be like uh, that baby. I think yeah. I think I'd be like that combination. Yeah. Oh, love, tearing me apart from the inside out, so I can see myself from the inside. So you are a fan of the sport, so I I, I understand. Like you say you, you pretty much paid nothing else attention other than MMA. Um, so like the landscape going up, like as far as like I'm, sure, you know, we talked about it. You want you want to fight in September at some point. Um, where do you see your your uh, that next jump going to? Because like evolve, that, I'm pretty sure evolve is like a is like a one championship type deal. Like as as far as like where where they're getting their guys from in Singapore, right? That's where they seem to be doing a lot of developing. So, are you keeping your feelers out? Are you open to to uh, to doing one championship or UFC or Bellator? Or where, where's your mind at as far as that? I, no, absolutely, man. I I'm I am welcome to more than welcome. That's what I want, want to do. Right. Um, I wanted to compete in larger scale promotions, but like right now, I just think that the biggest thing for me is cultivating experience. Right. Getting more fights. Like I once I decided to make that return back in MMA, like. Uh, I want to just fight now. Like I just want to, I just want to continue to fight and get get my reps in. You know, get my get my fights in. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like you know, like um, I don't think people understand like how big one championship is. Like, like if it's if, very if, big. If, and if, someone if, told me that the other day. Uh, someone made mention of the kind of money that like, like Demetrius Johnson's. Oh yeah. Like pay grade went up. Oh and I was yeah. Like, <laughs> what? Yeah. Well, I was like, why the fuck isn't everybody fighting for them? You know. Yeah, well, because like they've they've been doing a good job at solidifying the Eastern Hemisphere. Like that that fuck that whole they have Asia. They have uh, they're creeping in the, they're they're creeping into Africa. But as as far as like putting on some of the better show, it's like a direct rival. I, I think it's neck and neck at this point. They're they're doing it the last this year. I think they 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 had they hit two hundred fifty million dollars in cap space, which is a big deal because. This company, that company is only about four or five years old. The UFC did not have that luxury when they first started out. I don't get it. Man. I don't get where they're getting their funding. I don't know. I don't know how the hell it's happening. <laughs> I feel like I feel like this is a bunch of uh, really rich Chinese billionaires or yeah. Southeast Asian billionaires are getting together and just like this is like their fun project. Yeah. Like this is this is like their fun money. You go in Singapore alone. Yeah. I'd say one in five taxi cabs got like you know one FC posters like put up on them. See, that's the thing they're doing it right. It's not just a matter of like them just generating money from the events because like you can watch the events for free. I think now um, they have like deals with TNT and shit um, as far as like being on regular TV in America, and they're trying to like reach out over here in America and and I guess just America, like America, Canada, (laughs) like uh, you know the U.S. All that they're they're doing their best. They're they're they went out and they bought you know some high some some high profile guys from the UFC and you know some of them had. A rough go, um, you know. Other than, other than DJ, but um, 
you know, they're doing, as far as a business standpoint goes, it seems like they're doing everything they need to do to get their names out there. They've done it over there. Like, as, like you said, one in five people have, like, a, a poster of 1FC. It, ju- it just seems that they're cut, they've covered all their bases. They, they're making a lot of good business moves over there. And they're getting, and they're developing a lot of talent in-house, too. Um, and they've just, like, it seems like they've locked that, that portion of the world down. That's a big deal, especially when you're, that's what Dana's trying to do. Dana White's trying to open up UFC hubs in China, and, and they're having, uh, they're having a fight over there with, uh, with Zhang Wei Li, uh, uh, and Jessica Andrade. That's gonna be a great fight. I can't wait for that. Um, but they're doing, they're doing, uh, he's trying to, he's trying to get that market, too, because they support and love their fighters. They want, they, they are doing their things. They're making sure everyone's paid, everything, everyone loves their jobs, everyone's getting the best training that they can out there. They're doing it right. I like I I like the product that they're producing. Yeah, man, I do too. I do too. I think it's I think it's really cool. Competition's always good. I love I love that weight class. I don't feel like it's featured enough, and and I don't know why. I don't know why. I feel like there's a lot of really good athletes that can make 185 pounds. I feel like um, in the UFC, it's like. You know the Israel Adesanya show and the Robert Whitaker show right now. Uh, you know when Yoel's able when in between. Yoel, I think Yoel fighting Paul Acosta is like the next best thing. I would love to watch people uh, that to watch watch that fight. Um, but what? So what's what? Like what? Like what is it? Because like I I, don't, I haven't seen a, a middleweight fight in recent memory that wasn't great. Like you know even even guys like David Brandt. Like I watched David Branch fight over here in uh, in Atlantic City. He fought um, I think it was Tiago Santos. I'm pretty sure it was Tiago Santos. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, he lost to Tiago Santos. Right. I think that was a two. That was that. I don't know if that was a light heavyweight or not, but I'm pretty sure it was. <coughs> a, I'm pretty sure it was at middleweight. I don't think they fought a light, a light, a light heavyweight. Or they could have. Was it okay? Yeah, they could have. Now you have me second guessing myself because they fight, they fight mostly at 185. But um, but yeah, there, it's not it, like the. It's not like there's a lack of talent. Like for I understand the argument for for flyweight, right? Like there's not a ton of like really great guys who are fighting at flyweight that aren't going over to bantamweight or um it's like the the talent think, pool at the top has been small whereas like middleweight it just seems like there's constantly new guys coming in that are pretty good yeah yeah i think so too there's that uh that jack hermanson guy that's that just yes. beat jacare yes. uh you know he's an exciting uh Exciting dude to watch. I think I'm sure he'll be in contention soon. Right. Um, even Jacare himself. Jacare, um, yeah. Even that, like, talking about the top ten wide men, um, it's it's gone through. I think it's in the the best it's ever looked. Right. Right now, like Luke Rockwell just recently left the division. Yeah, he's fighting but, um, 205 now. I think <clears throat> he's fighting at 205 now. Yeah. Um, fuck, there's just lots of exciting so dudes many. right now. It's it's a wicked, it's a wicked time to be a middleweight fan. Yeah, and you know what? It's a wicked time to be a middleweight now. So, like, are you kind of like licking your chops at this prospect of like, well, now I can like, like, the, like the bevy of fighters are here for like for me to go out there and make my name, and like, there's a lot of them, and it seems like there's at least at least 15, 20 middleweights that are like that are like pretty damn good as far as the UFC is conf- concerned. Are you, are you looking to that to that next step, or you're, you're still you're just focused on unified right now? You're focused on getting that next fight lined up. And so on and so forth. I can't even. Uh, I for myself. I know it's gonna come. Yeah. I know it's gonna come. Right. I just have to. I just have to focus on what's in front of me. Right. Take each step individually, and then when it comes, I'll take it. Right. Like I know I'm gonna get there. I just gotta keep. I just gotta keep doing everything I can in the present moment. To get there, I love the focus, KB. I love the focus. It's great. That's great, man. That's great. So, th- so then, so then, tell me, so then, tell me a little bit, like about, like I don't know, like your your childhood and stuff. Have you always been this cool, calm, and collected? This is just the one thing in my life that I've ever actually truly dedicated myself to. Right. Like uh, I got my degree. I got my degree in corporate finance and accounting, but, but um, mm. it wasn't. Uh, it, it wasn't ever. It was just a job. Right. It was just something that was giving me money. But this is my job, but there's a sense of purpose in it and there's a it's goal oriented and in that sense it gives me it gives me purpose and it gives me focus. So I think anything in life that allows you to do that and also make money mm-hmm. is gonna ultimately lead to you being happy. So that's that's ultimately the way I look at it. Um, growing up 
I was, yeah, I was always a little bit more laid back. Calm. My brother's the the exact exact opposite. He's like a he's like a fucking human fireball. <laughs> Does he fight but, too? I guess. Uh, he did. My brother did, but he competes more actively in jujitsu now. Okay. Nice. But the guy's got uh, the guy's got literally the most energy out of any human being I've ever met in my life. <laughs> it's insane. Polar opposites. It's literally insane. <laughs> Polar opposites. Yeah, just yin and yang, man. The dude's like. A legit, just human cannon. <laughs> Were you guys fucking each other up a lot? Or that's a lot of story. That's um, that's a story that I know John Jones has. John Jones, yeah, and my brothers fucked me up all the time, so that's why I had to learn how to fight. Well, my my uh, fourth pro fight, my brother and I, my last sparring session of that camp, I was sparring my brother. Oh shit! And uh, my brother's good. My brother's a good fighter too. My brother's got black belt in taekwondo. He's, oh wow! He's uh, done kickboxing since he was a kid. It's in the blood. He, he's a good. He's a good striker. And um, we were sparring, and he deliberately kicked me in the dick like oh. two times. <laughs> and then he started laughing about it when I was like, "Was he dude? What the f- what the fuck?" Yeah. He started laughing, and then I tried to axe kick him in the head. <laughs> last minute, last round of sparring, tore my hamstring, oh. and then um, and then had to fight that fight with a torn hamstring. Oh, so that shit. really sucked. So so tell yeah. so tell me about that fight. When when was that fight? Uh, I think that fight was 20, 2013. 2013. So you're fighting you're fighting this fight and this is in what promotion? Uh this was in AFC. AFC. Okay. And uh you're so okay. Yeah. So you're fighting in the AFC. You you freshly tore your your hamstring going in that fight. What what's going through your mind? Is that something that's nagging or bugging your head or you just laser focus? That KB laser focus that we're talking about right now. No, I'm not going to lie, man. I had a lot of doubt like going into that, going into that day, uh, I remember that morning. I went over to, I went over to just get like a fruit smoothie, something in my system, just to like get my day started for the fight, and get some food in me. Mm-hmm. I drank that fruit smoothie. I vomited like oh, no. right away, just from the anxiety. Oh no! And um, I couldn't kick at all, uh, yeah. like on that side. And so you know, my coaches knew about it, and then. Uh, we just had to just had to beat him with what I had, like I just had to beat him with what I had. That was it. I knew I like I was gonna fight no matter what. I mean, uh, but just had to just had to do it. Really, you just just do it. Just suck it up and go out and do it. With that fucking torn yeah, hamstring. Yeah, just, just do it. That's some tough guy. It wasn't like it wasn't like completely torn. Yeah, but it was like there there was a like I guess a, there was a small tear in it. I mean, it's your hamstring, so even if there was, like, any yeah. tear, like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, that, yeah, that, yeah. That's, that's, it, that was, it was painful. It was yeah. it was really painful, but right. just had to deal with it. Wow. So you're going through that fight, and and, and does you, obviously that's not something you announced to anybody. Otherwise, I don't know. I mean, I don't know how that works. If you tell somebody you tore your hamstring, they pull you from the fight? Uh, I wouldn't announce it to any of the, the medical staff or anything. I was just right. – I told my coaches. Right. Um, yeah, I told I told Jeff and I told Luke, and then they were just like, they were just like, well, we're gonna do what we gotta do. We did the physio, <laughs> and then we start fighting for it. Yeah. Okay, so you go out there. No one knows it but yourself. Um, do, do, does your opponent pick up on it at all? No, uh, I don't think so. Yeah. Uh, he was like this. This guy was in like the toughest dude I've ever fought. Like, oh shit, t- mentally toughest guy I've ever fought. Insane. Like, uh, during the fight, he had, like, 40 stitches open up over his eyebrow. Oh, my God. Isn't that, aren't they supposed to call the fight? Like, jab, jab, jab. Yeah. Constantly getting jabbed, his whole eyebrow split open. Oh, no. Um, his leg was, like, black and blue from absorbing leg kicks. Yeah. Um, we got to the back room after the fight, and I was getting my gloves taken off, and... This doctor came over to me and he's like, he's like, hey, you, you boy? And I'm like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, what's up, man? And he's like, oh, man, did you ever do a number on that guy? And I'm like, oh, <laughs> shit. I'm like, oh, no. I'm like, what happened? Is he okay? Yeah. And then he started telling me the, you know, the damage that, that Derek had. Uh-huh. And I was like, oh, my God. I was like, how the fuck did that guy fight through that? Yeah. And um What kind of damage did he do? I walked by I walked by him after the fight. He had like he had his eyes stitched up and he just shook my hand and he was like, Great fight, man. And I'm like 
yeah. <laughs> like, you, you too. I was like, you too, man. Yeah. At one point in the third round, he was like, he had his head pinned into the cage. Yeah. And he was looking at me dead in the eyes as I was ground and pounding. Yeah. And he's, he was like, I fucking love it. Oh, my God. I love it. <laughs> And I'm like, whoa. Yeah. Whoa. That's, okay. a, that's a certain type of personality we got there. Uh, d- yeah. So, so obviously you're not, I mean, like, I'm not going to say you're not intensely, obviously you are in love with the sport. You're intensely, you're, you know, I don't know what your level of intensity is of, of appreciation for the sport, but I assume it's very high considering the amount of attrition you're going through for your just through your body um just to keep going it just to do the weight cuts injuries you sustain you're like fuck it i'm still gonna fight what is it like fighting somebody like that like what what's 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 what is that what does that do to your game plan as far as like and, and or just anything like a, that approach like knowing somebody's crazy screaming i love it in your face and you're beating the shit out of him and it's and it's like you know you're doing the damage it's confirmed the damage is being confirmed by medical professionals like what is that what is that like there's thousands of guys like that you're going to come across so what so what is that what is that how does that change anything for you uh, i think in your head I think in your head, like, you just got to tell yourself that, like, this kind of person, you're not going to probably put away with a single shot. Right. And don't get into the mentality of thinking of putting them away. Right. Um, you just have to mentally tell yourself that the blows are going to accumulate, and as they do, they'll do what they're meant to do, which is do damage. And the byproduct of the damage is that somebody's either going to have to stop the fight, or mm. that person's going to be so incapacitated that... They'll have to get they'll be So you have to, right. you just kind of got to go, you got to go neutral in there and not get attached. Um, you, you can't get emotionally attached to what they're trying to do is goad you into a brawl. Right. Because that's, that's their, that's the only way they can win. Um, you just have to be, you just have to know that the techniques you're using are meant to hurt and they will hurt as long as you execute them well Mm -hmm. and don't don't have an attachment to don't have an emotional attachment to them just execute well said (laughs) it doesn't get much better than that i mean that as as i've described before like you just you're like this cool calm collected guy and obviously the way your thought process goes during a fight it reflects that as well too so i would have to refer back to like your training so can you tell me about where you train yeah um i do uh, all of my mma training at uh shave bears mma okay um we have a really elite squad of, of big guys over there like you look at the top 10 in canada for heavyweight light heavyweight middleweight and welterweight and all of our guys are like within the the top tens for each of those. Mm-hmm. Um, the guys there are going out of their way to fight internationally in, in M1 and in, in Russia, Kazakhstan, and Australia. Uh, Tanner Bozer is really flying the flag. like, And he just recently got signed to the UFC. It's just, what I love about the team there is that it's a group of guys that are really tight-knit and very talented, but everyone goes out of their way to, to care about one another in their preparation. Hmm. And... It's hard ass work, man. Like it's just, it's hard work, and some people are not attracted to the level of of intensity that's in that room. They can't deal with it. It's just that grueling, man. And but the guys there that can take it, you know, they're some of the best guys in the country. I think soon to be some of the best guys in the world. Like yeah. it's it's a great team. I, I, and I other know. Than, oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. And then. Uh, uh, apart from the MMA side, we do the same guys there do our striking over at Frank Lee's. Okay. Frank Lee's Muay Thai. And then uh, I do do my jiu jitsu with uh, uh, Luke Harris at Hayabusa Training Center. Okay. Uh, uh, Pat uh, trains out of the Hayabusa Training Center over there. I like I like their products a lot. Is, is that something that's like directly. Is, the, is that Hayabusa Training Center? Is that like based around that idea of like of like their equipment? Or do, is that a, just a byproduct of their equipment? Like, uh, you know how like. Um, the Patriots play at Gillette Stadium. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think so. I, from my understanding, I'm not, I'm not entirely sure, mm-hmm. but I know that Luke Luke is the founder of Hayabusa, the equipment company. Okay. 
Um, he's a founder of, of Hayabusa, Hayabusa, and then he's also a, a really highly accredited martial artist himself. Like he's he's competed on the Ultimate Fighter. He's a he's a black belt in judo, a black belt in jujitsu. He's the number one ranked uh, masters jujitsu guy in the world in the IBJJF. Holy shit! Which is insane. That's a big like, deal. in the world, not just Canada, but in the world. Yeah. So. Uh, he just loves teaching, and he's taken the platform of Hayabusa and made it a gym. So, awesome. I've never had um, at this level seen that many skilled guys in a room that will genuinely want to help each other. That will, like, you know, put their egos down, right, and not try and fuck each other up all the time. That's a big thing, right? But genuinely, it's like it's like okay, KB's got a fight coming up. We're gonna do what we can to push him to the fucking brink, right? But not hurt him right. and make sure that he's ready right. sharp for his fight. It, you know that dynamic is so hard to find. Like you know, I I, I don't want to talk shit about anybody's camp because everyone camp everyone's camp does something different, right? So like I was talking to uh, Desmond Green. He's the fighter out of the UFC. He fights at a uh, one fifty five, um, and yeah. He fights out of Hard Knocks, uh, uh, Henry Hoofs in, in Florida, um, and they fuck each other up like like real bad, like like they like they like they really they really they fucking hurt each other. Like I was I was watching, he's he's got it on his page. Like there were a bunch of savages over there. there he he was um he was fighting I think or uh, or sparring with uh, Daniel Strauss. So him and Daniel Strauss yeah. are, are sparring, and they're and they're and they're going at it, and and he. I, I don't I don't remember the exact maneuver, but he picks up Daniel Strauss by his hips and he drops him on his head and he knocks him unconscious. So I don't know like like how that helps. <laughs> like I like I don't know how that helps out other than like that me- just bringing that mental I toughness. I think that's kind of that's kind of stupid. Yeah. Like, yeah. like yeah, you you need to push each other really hard, but you need to have a sense of trust too, right? right? Like I just think that when you. If you don't have that kinship with the people that you train with, then yeah. you're on edge all the time and you're not doing something that's conducive to making you better. Right. You're just putting yourself in a compromised position to have A, severe injury, and right. shorten your career. Like, why, like, it's just stupid. Like, if, if, there's, if one of the guys is getting ready for a fight and I'm not, I'm training hard, but I'm doing everything in my power to make sure that they're going to get to the fight okay. Right. Like, you know, if, like, like let's say, uh, let's say, for example, sparring's happening. I think you should spar for timing. But, like, if you, for example, let's say uh, someone's available for a head kick. You throw the head kick, but at the very last second, you just, you, put, you, you pull just it off. pull it. Like, you <laughs> develop the, the ability to control, and you pull it so that you don't, you know, you don't kill the guy, but you let the guy know that it's there. Right. You know, just, and then he'll know too, and he'll be he'll be aware of it. Just so they can like, make those adjustments. Like I think you need to. At, you know, I played football. Like I didn't play. I didn't really. I've never competed in. Uh, and uh, I also to be clear, I didn't play football at a high level level either. I played varsity football and I played semi pro football. But I think when you don't have a, a certain level of contact, you kind of like forget. Like you get a little bit complacent as far as like what you should be doing um, and how what your intensity should be for certain for certain movements. And I kind of see that in sparring a little bit now. Like I'm, as an adult now, I'm starting to do a little bit of sparring, sort of a little bit of boxing, kickboxing, all that stuff. Um, you don't know... I, I mean, like, obviously you guys are way different. You guys are professional athletes. A lot of you are like really good athletes and, and yourself included. So I think you're going to have that natural inclination to have that timing down. Like you're gonna have that. You're gonna have like a natural ability to, to pick something up. But I still think though, getting those mental reps in and understanding of where your openings are for certain things is, is very necessary to your process and getting better as a fighter. So um, you know, I I understand that. I understand. I understand what you're talking about. But I don't know. I like. I also kind of respect like. Like there's like some sort of like warrior mentality there too. Like as far as like you know, dis- I don't know. I, everyone's different. And I, you know, but you're gonna fight. Like the thing is, like you're gonna fight anyways. Yeah. Like you're gonna, like you're gonna go and fight anyways on a set date. You're gonna, you're gonna be going all out from money. Right. Why are you gonna, you know, why are you gonna risk injury? Go to war with your training partners, and then lose out potentially on that opportunity because you were dumb and wanted to and got spiked on the head 
right. by another guy in the gym that you didn't trust. Like, there's guys in the gym sometimes now. Like, I'm like I know they're coming in. They get real excited on sparring days. Right. They'll come in on sparring days. They're not there for any of the other days for drilling and whatnot. Right. So the end of the week comes. I'm fucking bad. Like I'm I'm dead tired. Right. And then you know, buddy comes in, and then he's he's excited and heated to spar. I'm not gonna spar that guy. Right. No, like. No. Yeah, I mean, like. like what's the point? I'm not. I'm not there for him to spar me, and you know, potentially hurt me. Like right. it's just. Do you like, do you find that a lot too? Do you find all people come off the street and like I just want to come and and just go full tilt against actual fighters and then just not compete or not like you said before don't come is that yeah. is that a common occurrence yeah there's uh there's been guys that have like wanted to come in and just spar and then like you know have a little fun with it let them come in and and beat them up and then <laughs> then, they know, then they know what's what and they won't do it anymore yeah but there's there are some of those guys i mean but then there's just guys that sometimes are in the gym and uh Yes, they have a membership and everything. Sometimes they train, but they're not doing it at the same. They don't have the same ambitions that you have, mm-hmm. and they're just kind of being irresponsible coming in and wanting to to hurt guys. And that's not what I view training as. Yeah. Like I, I don't view my I don't view my training as an opportunity to go in and Fuck and hurt people. It's very much it's very much so a, a job to me. Right. And. Uh, you know, my body's my weapon. My body's my way I make a living. So if you're going to come in and potentially jeopardize that, then, right. you know, I take it seriously. Some, someone did it with the fucking Pat. Rolling. The, someone was rolling with Pat just off the street and just fucking broke his leg and then never came back. <laughs> like, like, like who, what psycho fucking does shit like that? That's so crazy yeah. to me. Yeah, you got to, like, um, you really have to detach yourself from your ego and, and try and understand, like, how is this going to benefit me in the long run? If these, like, these, your training partners, are your training partners, do they care about you? Right. Right. And do you care about your training partners? If it works both ways, you know, then you have a team. You have a true team. If it doesn't, then you just have, like, a, like, almost like a puppy mill of fighters. Right. And, and, and building that culture, like, you don't find it, obviously, like, the big gyms have that, right? Like, you know, you talk about American Kickboxing Academy, and you talk about, you know, places like where, where you're at. Um, developing those relationships and making and making those connections with people, not only through a networking standpoint is that great, but just for yourself, like you said before, sharpening your skills and sharpening your, your skill set. So, um... I'm, I'm, you know, I'm glad, I'm glad to find that you've, that you found your, your niche and your place, uh, you know, cause not a lot of people are able to, there's, the, you know, the, these really good gyms are few and far between as, you know, there's, I think there's bajillions of MMA gyms, bajillions of boxing gyms, bajillions of all these other places to go, but finding a place where you're able to excel and make yourself better. That's like, that's like a diamond in the rough type situation. And that's hard, like, man. It is really hard. And that's why when, uh. When people tease at the idea of like, oh, like, why don't you like move to um, so and so, like Florida or like Greg Jackson's or something like that? I'm like, like, man, I don't, I don't think people understand like how good of a, of a team we have over here. Like, it's, it's phenomenal. Right. And I'm really thankful for it. It's great. It's obviously a listen. It's pay, it's paying dividends right now, literally, and then also figuratively. It's, it's helping you become a better, you know, person, a better fighter. That's 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 some great. That's great, man. That's great. Um. So you're, pre- I mean, you're pretty well ranked uh, on on Tapology. Tapology has you as like fourteen, like top fourteen or top fifteen. Um, that's you know that's that's some great that's some great shit. Obviously, you don't. I'm, you're not you're not a guy that that strikes me as that is that as that something that's going to go to your head. But you know, as you continue to win and as you continue to more to do more, I, I would imagine you're going to go ahead and and make that leap and go ahead and, and go and and get go after that middleweight championship that you have at, at Unified. Uh, MMA. Obviously, that's going to be your ultimate goal, your ultimate aspiration right now. Yeah, I mean, well, my ultimate goal and aspiration is just to keep winning. Right. And just never lose. Just to keep getting better. Like getting better. Getting better is really what what drives me. It's titles will be a, a byproduct of getting better. Right. But keep keep building upon the skills and and learning, and that's really what drives me. So, the, so would you? So, like in twenty years from now, right? Like, what do you want? What do you want your? Twenty legacy, years from now? Yeah, twenty years from now. What do you? What do you want your legacy to have been? What, what's your? What do you want your mark to have been on this sport? So 
someone asked me this last time, I said that I want to be remembered as a master of my craft. And, uh, you know, I still stick to that. Like, uh, it's, uh, it's the, the accumulation of all the skill work and all the drudgery in the gym. Like, it has to, for myself, it has to lead to a good product. Like, for myself, it has to lead to myself being a great martial artist. Right. Like, I, I want to demonstrate that in my fights. And, like I said before, titles and accolades will come. I know that it's that, I'm, that that's where I'm going because the work that I'm doing is conducive to that. So, right. that's it, man. Like, I'm, I want to be remembered as a true master of my craft. Mm-hmm. Master of many hats. I appreciate it. Well, before we go, I, I do I do like, I like your, uh, I don't know if it's the same, but I read on there, it's it's uh, KB the Bengal uh, b- uh, Buller. So is is are you still coming out as the bangle? They are the biggest of all cats. And one of the most distinctive. Lithe and powerful with bold black stripes. Tigers are amongst the most charismatic and majestic animals on our planet. Noble and fierce. Tigers have instilled awe into the hearts and minds of people throughout our history. Yeah, yeah, man, that's that's my nickname. Every, you know, I can't I can't ever go by ta- uh, tapology because like it's everyone's name is like you know like, different or like or it's it's not they don't update it they just don't update the the name so I I got I got to make sure so so for the bangle what so where, where did you get that from what, let me uh, just give me a background on that I want to know what the background is I want to finish up on the bangle. Uh, the, the bangle nickname was kind of, it was given to me by my grandfather growing up always called me Tiger okay and then my first coach. Um, nicknamed the Bengal because he he saw I didn't like the, the I said it, he said it was like the way I moved because I was fast uh-huh. and that uh and, and he just gave me that nickname. It's stuck. I like it. He gave me scary shit. Remember that from India too, so it oh. works. So okay, so that was gonna. I don't want to assume because um, I di- I didn't know. I didn't even really know how to ask without without it saying. So, you never want to assume for for anybody. So um, so so are you? Were you born and raised in Canada, or or did, were your did, was your family hailing from yeah, from was, India? I'm like a I'm like a coconut man. I'm like brown on the inside, but I'm like white on the inside. <laughs> I'm, sorry, I'm brown on the outside, but I'm white on the inside. But yeah, I was born in uh, I was born in Canada, born and raised in Canada. Yeah, but I do visit India every two. Two years to a year because I have tons of family back there, so I always go back. How does how does um, how does your family receive your re- receive your your career choice? Oh, they fucking love it. My dad, my dad, when I decided that I wanted to like get a corporate job, yeah, was was pissed. <laughs> like he was like, he was like, "Why the fuck you are doing that, man? You are fighter." <laughs> No, you are fighter. You are not this accountant. <laughs> he one day, like, came up to me as I was like writing up a bunch of emails and whatnot, and he's like, "KB, what the hell you are doing with your life?" <laughs> and I was like, "Dad, I'm trying to just work a job like a normal person." He's like, "KB, hmm? you are not job. You are not accountant." <laughs> You are fighting. You are fighter, so just go fight. That's amazing. Like, I'm like, my own father is telling me this, this is insane. <laughs> like at the time, I was like, "What the what?" Yeah. I was like, "This is very backwards advice," but okay. And uh, you know, once I had that realization myself, that then I I quit my job. So, so, so is your family like this whole fight family? Because you said your mom was it was in the like high level doing judo. So you know where 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 is this? Where does this come from? Where does this fighting background come from in your family? Uh, my mom grew up doing judo as a as a kid. So she she did it till she got her black belt, and then she got married. And then obviously, marriage and children takes more of a priority over judo. Right. Um, but uh, my dad boxed. Uh, okay. My grandfather boxed. <laughs> Uh, my great uncle box. Damn. So uh, we just, as kids, when we when we growing up, we learned to do martial arts. They were like, "Yeah, well, of course you do." <laughs> That's what we did, man. That's what we did. 
it was really normal to them. They were just kind of like, yeah, they come to all the fights. Like they, they support me at every single one of my fights. That's great. Um, That's great. You know, it's they've always been extremely supportive. That's amazing. You know, you don't find that in a lot of, like, you know, I consider this an art, right? So if you're in, you know, it's fucking in the name, makes martial arts. It's, I can, I consider it just as much as like, you know, obviously the fucking, you know, the margin of error is like way higher, but, um, you know, you don't see like people like, oh, I want to be a rapper. Oh, I want to be, I want to be like an artist or whatever. Or in, in, in a lot of cases too, like, oh, I want to be a fighter. Everyone goes fucking sure you do. You know, (laughs) like, you know what I mean? Like, like there's not, so it's like. That's like a that's like a really big deal. So like, not only do you have a great team behind you, but your family is full throttle. Like they seem to be they seem to be into it. And uh, I'm really I'm really lucky in that way. Yeah. yeah. Like I'm really really lucky to to be surrounded by a, a support group that's that is just that man. They're so unbelievably supportive and right. giving, and uh, they they never they've never instilled any negativity towards like anything I've ever wanted to do and, and fighting being one of those things. Um, and it, it just makes it easier for myself to be able to pursue it. There's so many guys that have overcome some like almost like I'd say insurmountable odds to be able to, to fight and, and perform. A lot of them. And go through like just, just real hardships yeah. during camp and outside camp to be able to make it there. So, you know, the utmost respect for those guys. But for myself... You know, I've I've always had the open road to just just train and try and do everything you can to be the best you can be. So, in the end, like I'll never have an excuse right. to why I can't. There's some of my training partners or guys I know have had to deal with some just just fuck up stuff. Yeah, and uh, they still come out. They perform on fight day, and I really admire that. Yeah. That's great. I mean, like, you know, it does, uh, as much as... You, no, I'm not saying you have any excuses, but, like, it doesn't seem like your fucking dad will let you have an excuse to not fight. <laughs> just popped no, up. My dad, my dad was, like... It was funny. I went up to my dad the other week, and uh, Tanner, got my, my, one of my main training partners, Tanner got signed to the UFC. Yeah. And I'm like, Dad, Dad, uh, I got great news. And he's, like, sitting on his couch, and he's, like, sipping on some tea, and he's like, Yo, what, what is the news? <laughs> and I'm like, yes. I'm like, Dad, Tanner got signed by the UFC. He's like, oh, yeah, that's good. So, why didn't you? <laughs> I'm like, uh, I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> He's like, next time, just tell me when you get signed by UFC. <laughs> okay. He's like, yeah, go work hard. <laughs> I'm like, all right. Well, thanks, Dad. We need to get your dad mic'd up. <laughs> whenever, whenever you guys you get my dad, on, you got my dad on the podcast. He'll talk some. He'll talk some shit, dude. You look at my dad's Facebook page. It's just, it's just me fighting. It's just things of me fighting, and then he's proud. Indian politics. Indian politics. Indian politics. That's great, dude. That's all he cares about is Indian politics and fighting. That's amazing. That's amazing. So he obviously he's he's keeping it. He's keeping his thumb on the pulse over there in India. So so how does he get his info? So he is he in, he's in Canada too. Yeah, my dad's in Canada too. So um, what what Indians do okay. is uh, you go over to like a convenience store, right? It's kind of like an underground thing. Okay. But uh, if you go up to the guy, you go up to the guy at the front of the convenience store and yeah. you say, real low voice, you say, can I get a jadu box? Jadu what? box is what it's called. You're whispering jadu now. Box. I can't hear you. <laughs> you got to whisper to him. You got to say it quiet. You'll be like, can I get a jadu box? Uh-huh. And then he's going to be like, twenty four ninety nine. And then you slide him 25 bucks, and then he's going to open a drawer at the bottom. He's going to pull out this, like, fucking cardboard box. And it's like a TV dish box, but it gets every single uh, Middle Eastern, Chinese, uh, Southeast Asian, and Indian uh, TV TV stations around the world. And it pulls them uh, via the internet, uh-huh. and you have access to them all the time. Huh. So, like, Indians aren't paying, like, any sort of, like... TV subscription fee, <laughs> and uh, you get to, so my dad will sit there and he'll watch every single Punjabi Hindi news station nonstop all day long politics. Oh, all day. You're teaching me all some shit long. today. I did not know this is some fucking Fight Club shit here for for, for Indian news. So yeah, I, I go to any 
go to any 7-Eleven. Go to any 7-Eleven, walk oh. up to the guy, and just whisper it. Say, can I get a Jadu box? He'll know what you're talking about. What the fuck? <laughs> this is I'm trying. Listen, I'm going to try this shit, okay? If I get fucking embarrassed, yeah. I'm going to say KB sent me. <laughs> they might not know who that is, but they'll know what a Jadu box is. Okay. They'll probably look at you and be like, why do you want Jadu box? And then they'll think you're maybe onto them or some shit. Yeah. But... I want, think now I just want to so, so be, be careful, be prepared for that, but trust me, it's a thing. It's a thing. Wow. Holy shit. Yeah, man. That's some good shit. We, we, listen, we're getting yeah, knowledge right, bombs today? Yeah. <laughs> well. It happens, man. <laughs> KB, thank you for taking time out of your busy-ass schedule. I know you got a lot of shit lined up. Um, you know, you have a very promising career. Um, I mean, it's already, you know, it's, it's paying off now. You're, you're, you're seven and zero right now. You're one of the best, uh, uh MMA promotions in Canada. Um, you know, I, you know, I'm, it's going to be fun. It's going to be fun to watch you progress through your career. Like now that now I am now fully I, like in order for me to be like past a casual fan in this sport, I have to kind of like understand what's going on in other places, right? So I can't just I can't just watch the UFC. I can't just watch Bellator. I can't just watch one championship. I have to go out and I have to find these promotions that are pulling guys like yourself. So it's gonna be it's gonna be great. It's gonna be great. What you know, watching you progress through your career too, um, and 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 Pat and everyone in Unified. So uh, thank thank you again, man. I, I couldn't be more grateful. Thank you so so much for finding the time. And we had like an hour on. Yeah. That's great. Thank you very much as well, man. Thank you very much as well. Thanks for taking the time to have me on the show. Anytime. Very much appreciate it, right? Anytime, man. Anytime, KB. I'll shoot you some text. I'll shoot some shit. Are you watching the fights tonight? Uh, tonight's Dos Santos versus Nganu, right? Yes. I'm actually... Right now, I'm in Vancouver. It's an adjacent city from Edmonton. I surprised my one of my best friends for his birthday. Look at you. You're such a good friend. Surprise. Dude, this guy flies... To every single one of my fights, the last oh, three shit. fights, and uh, like, man, I gotta give it back, man. He's one of my best buddies, so I came out and surprised him. So I might not be able to watch the fights, but I will. Uh, I have fight pass, so I'll check out the results after. But I'm gonna avoid the internet right. for the night. You should, because it's I. I don't think that's not gonna be a, a deci- that's not a, if there's decision fights out there. I don't think that's gonna be one of the decision fights of the card. Junior Dos Santos, my favorite heavyweight of all time. So I hope he does it. I really hope he does. Yeah, you, you know, I, I can't, I, I want to be bipartisan, right? So, like, I can't be, like, I want to see, like, one person win over the other. I do want to see a knockout, though. I mean, if, if, it, if, it's, if it is going to happen, this is, these two are the guys that are going to be able to deliver on that. Um, yeah, so before before I let you go, um, is there anything that you need to plug, like, upcoming things, you know, your camps or your sponsors or anything like that? People you want to thank, shout outs. Uh, just, you know what? Thank you to my friends, my family that continue to support me. Um, I love you guys. It, it means the world that you continue to support my career. Uh, thank you to my sponsors, uh, Mealcraft. Um, thank you, Laser Shear Advanced Skin Rejuvenation. Uh, thank you, Pivotal Physiotherapy. Thank you, uh, Revival Apparel. Thank you to Excel Athletics. And I I think I covered everybody. Uh, if I forgot anyone, I'm so sorry. But thank you all so much. Comment on the uh, YouTube yeah, video. Man. If he didn't thank you, you know. Comment on the YouTube video. Do your thing. <laughs> KB, thank you so much, man. Thank you so much. Have a great day. All right. Take care, brother. Thank you very much. Peace.